Welcome to the select board meeting, July 8th, 2024, 6 5, still 6.16 p.m. Um, open meeting law conformity. The, um, aid, the agenda has been posted in three places. I did see two of them myself. It has been posted on the website, yep. and it has been emailed to all interested parties. Yes. Therefore, we can proceed with the meeting, and we conform to the e open meeting law. Um, the minutes from the prior meeting, which was June 24th, 2024, I have read them over. Frank is reviewing. I don't see any problem with them. I move that we accept the minutes to the meeting, 2024. I second, I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So be it. <clears throat> Under new business, we do have a park use application from Jared Mayer of Brooklyn Healing Arts. It doesn't specify which park, but I'm assuming it is the main park. Yep. Um, he is asking for use of the park on Wednesdays at 5.30 p.m. in the months of July and August. Um, he would like to offer sound baths and meditation on Wednesdays in July and August. I would play gongs, singing bowls, and various uh, other tools for meditation while participants relax. In my opinion, I think that perhaps the lion's field would be a better setting for all of that. Um, hopefully there aren't a lot of Harleys and dump trucks going by the park when they're trying to meditate. But um, I see no reason why we don't give it a shot. Um, yeah, I don't have a problem with it. Okay. Well, all, we will all tread quietly around 5.30 on Wednesdays around the park. All in favor? All right. Aye. <clears throat> So every Wednesday? Yeah, every Wednesday during, at 5. He did yeah. say that if there was a rain day, that it could be possibly Tuesdays or Thursdays. So just playing it by year, if that works for everybody. Okay. And at, at that time of the day during the week, we typically don't have anything else scheduled. The next and last thing on our new business is CB oil pre-buy for the town office. <clears throat> Going forward, um, we did receive a pre-buy notification on June 14th. At the time that this was presented, it doesn't really say it here, um, the, the pre-buy for minimum of 500 gallons was set at $2.19 per gallon for propane. Um, I have had discussions with CV Oil today and will continue discussions with CV Oil tomorrow of they have already agreed to reduce the per gallon fee to $1.99, and they will be reviewing our gallon usage, and uh, perhaps we could do a little bit better. Um, at the very least, I would like to say that we would um, ask for approval to sign a document saying that we would do a pre-buy of at least 500 gallons at the price no more than $1.99. That's for propane, Pat. That's for propane. It, this is for the town office building, which is heating oil. So the price is going to be different. We'll have to call them for a market price. Um, they change that price um, change changes daily, and they usually let it ride for a week, I think, is what they're doing. So we'll yeah. have to call them to get a price for oil. Because this building... Two days they'll give you that price. Right. I believe you're right. Because... He's already been talking. Yeah. What size tank do we have here in this town? We got a 275. We we took the thousand gallon buried tank out a couple years ago, and and replaced it with a 275 because we we just had no idea what we were using really because you Did couldn't. It turn out 275 was uh, adequate for a winter. It, yeah, they they come and we're on delivery and. So Last year we pre-bought, I don't know the exact number we did uh, for last year, but we wound up, uh, we came out pretty close. We, we wound up with $155 credit, and I think it's 
in the town report you can look and see what the fuel costs were in, of that building but um, but it was easier for us to do that we we hadn't really got a had a good number i mean jeff looked it all over in the past and, and we couldn't really nail down a decent number but now with a tank this size we can monitor how much we've used in the last winter heating season a lot easier because we know you know what's left and what's you know been put in delivered so i, I think i'll follow up question with this when i had seen this on the agenda i reviewed the annual report just trying to get a good feel for what is our uh, long-term strategy to convert to heat pumps with the oil being a backup do we have an actual plan structure for that um this this building right now is jeff is and we've discussed going through this building to get some work done on it because it's so inefficient and it needs a lot of repairs and then that's the time when we would address that issue um, for currently we just have to go with what we got to keep it going at this point but uh, yeah jeff you can add to that we also have a uh, appendix to our town plan is the energy plan. Uh, it, it basically follows in one step with the state's comprehensive energy plan. And it has, predating me, they have numbers in there for where we sat with the number of uh, people, for instance, and things like that. So there is, is a record that we can look at moving forward. And again, a plan as spelled out by the state. The details of that now are different based upon all the different properties and towns around. Um, we have a grant for um, a level two. We're getting a level two energy audit on this building and the garage because they were bigger users of energy. And I can't speak for the school, but right. Um, but, uh, so, is there a two-year? accomplishment plan, three years, or how far out are we looking? Um, well, the, the end goals are, are looking at 2050. 90% of all energy that we consume coming from renewable sources, by 2050. <laughs> it's staged, it's 20, I think it was a 2025 component, a 2030 component, and all the way up. And that's on the, uh, the town, um, Actually, I go to the um, Coochie there. Is our torque? Two, two rivers. Two rivers out of Coochie. I, I find it faster there on their website. It, it the whole thing. So, for you, uh, visualizing heat pumps for this building with oil as a backup, what year would you project that? In this building. Uh, I would have suggested immediately, but I'm not the one in charge of revenue, so. <laughs> well, like Frank just said, there's some repairs that need to be done to the building that should well, be done in advance of that. But the energy loss <coughs> of the building is still there That's for what the we're oil working as on. well as the heat. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of questions still to be answered on whether or not this building is going to stay as a, as this building. and And that's up in the air with what happens with the school. I mean, there's a whole mess of things that are in the works that no one, you know, you don't know what's going to happen with what in the next year. So if you put a lot of infrastructure money into this building and then you just get rid of it, what the hell are you doing? You're just throwing your money away because anybody who buys this building would probably knock it down or start over somehow. And so I think in the long run, you have to look at it as a, as a probably a five to 10 year idea because you don't really know what we're gonna do with this building. And no one does at this point. And so in the long run, it's gonna take a few years to figure out where we're gonna go with this place. And I don't know what the answer is on that, Mason. I have no idea. It's, there's just a lot of 
irons in the fire right now and nobody really knows and I get I get it I mean you can walk around this building I mean they were heating the the back garage space for I don't know how many years and no, nothing was in it and so I blocked it off and I you know I yeah. and so you. we doing <laughs> with doing what we've done here and we haven't done a lot but it this was the first winter, this last winter, where we could identify how much our actual energy use was. Uh, before, it was just a thousand gallon buried tank in the ground, and they just came and put fuel in it, and who knows how much we used, actually used. But with a smaller tank and, and located in the building, we know exactly what we're using, so we can gauge it. And so, that's definitely a step forward. Yeah, and, and that's what we're trying to figure out what process we're going. We do have propane here now with the generator. There is a 500 gallon tank that we've installed when we put the generator in. So we would have an option for that in this building also, but that's not really a environmentally friendly either. So, so we just have to wait and see. I mean, you've got a high ceiling in this building and so all that. With that wait and see, um, uh, we, uh, as you well know, we have this uh, the 23rd, the vote at the uh, Stockbridge. Uh, tonight is probably the last chance for you guys to actually communicate to the Rochester voters how important this is for them to attend. So it's in the paper that you know the select board feels it's important for, for uh, the voters to attend this particular meeting for a few reasons just one of them was what you just spoke about you know uh you know where are we going with this building you know um so i appreciate it if uh, uh, tonight we do make sure that uh, you're doing that right now what is the time of the meeting and it's in stockbridge correct yes on the 23rd um 6 p.m at the stockbridge central school Floor vote only in person. So we I'm do have sure one more meeting going before that. To potentially be uh, paper ballot either. <laughs> this is the revote on the school budget. Okay. Uh, it's it's to decide yes. if it's going to be revoted. Right. Oh. Right. Thank you. And a few other other questions. Things come up there. <laughs> Excuse me, Pat. Building. My record shows for just a second, Mark. At the is this building the one though that just had uh, three by for part of the year? I'm working on all the town buildings together, we, whether they're oil or we, propane. We did a we did a pre buy for this building last year, and I think we bought like 800 gallons. I think. I, I, I'm not confident in my number where the pre buys exist. Yeah. We, we, what has been consumed? I know it's been purchased, but hasn't been consumed. I think 800 gallons sticks in my mind. Did you say on that letter? But no. no, it doesn't. And we, and we just got notice of it, so we're just, we have to look it up and see what we bought last year and see what, <coughs> you know, then we can compare. We, we wound up with a credit of $155. So yeah, was we, close. we were close in what we assumed we'd use and, and what we actually use. But they, we've kept the heat downstairs limited. Um, basically, it's not, you know, hardly any use down there anyway. But because it's a hot air furnace, it's hard to regulate those, those places in the building. So, um, you know, it's... It's a crapshoot. Martha had a question. Martha, go ahead. I just wanted to mention in, in uh, regards to what Mason said about that meeting coming up at the Stockbridge School, I have an entire article about it in this that'll be in this Thursday's Herald on the Rochester page. Uh, so, you know, they'll, they'll be all, I got all the information from the um, school board. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Okay, so it's noted on ORCA and it's noted in the newspaper. We're getting publicity out there. You could be some other mailers too. Yeah. <laughs> the um, so can uh, can we move on? Let's move on. Um, is there anyone here from the library? I do not see them. 
Highway Department. Uh, John was on vacation last week. Uh, they've been working up on West Hill, getting, uh, doing a bunch of needed work that's been on the burner there for quite a while. They've got a lot of stone line ditching to do. I think they'll be <clears throat> having a contractor in there to, to clean up the ditch, and they've been doing what they can with the loader, and then they'll come in and clean it up. Um, and that's been about it. And John was on vacation last week, and and the other two boys were hauling sand and dirt and, and uh, taking care of some equipment there. They had a flat tire on the loader that needed some repair and things like that. Just so another day in the neighborhood. Just another day in the neighborhood. <laughs> the roads are in pretty decent shape from what I've seen and where I've driven. Good. We're expecting rain this halfway, week. so Halfway decent job there. We're ready for it. Uh, utilities operator, no go tonight. But we do have an energy coordinator. Jack? Yeah, he's inside your space. You're up. Okay. Um, I've submitted a couple of emails that didn't get to you until late today. Um, one is some language on uh, the uh, mowing and trimming contract. Um, I would love to write it more, strong, more strongly as a demand, but I guess that where the comfort level might be. Um, that equipment these days, the, the small size is around four grand and it goes up from there. Um, it is on a life cycle cost basis less expensive to go electric than it is to go gas. And the commercial equipment that is on the market is capable of mowing all day um, and charging at night. Uh, so if, if you're happy with that language, uh, fine. If not, uh, and you want it stronger or weaker, or I could take another stab at it. I didn't think it was too strong. I think I think it's fine. It makes the point that we need to make. Um, I don't think it's scaring anyone away from submitting a bid um, because the point is that we do need to get mowing done. And so um, we, we are inviting for bids. I mean, one of the thoughts I had was um, contacting the electric mower dealers to see if they would share information about someone in our circumference area that, that might have the electric mowers so that we specifically invite them as well. Um, and so that was just a secondary thought that I had about trying to find somebody that could do electric jobs for us. We did um, a couple years ago. Yeah, I know. No electric I was there. You were there. <laughs> And um, I don't know that, whether we really have a di different contractor base than we had back then. <clears throat> no, but I wouldn't mind reaching a little further, uh, you know, in, in out, a little outside our area to see if there are people out there that do that. We did outreach to 60, 70 firms um, when we did that. Event mm -hmm. we had 40 attendees, and I'm not aware of any sales that happened. Mm -hmm. A couple of the things, the incentive didn't seem to be big enough for the contractors. They liked the equipment. Um, the incentive was a problem for them, and they they themselves are kind of in a three-year cycle where their equipment uh, mm -hmm. needs to be replaced every three years. Right. Well, they're doing too much repair work on them. Um, which is a big benefit because that won't happen with, with the, uh, the electric mowing. But finding them in the right point of their equipment replacement cycle, I think, is the key to get the switch. Mm -hmm. And uh, contract and anchor. Could you get the contact information from Jeff and send it to those people again? Just try to... Interest well, my idea was to contact dealers that sell the equipment to see if they would be willing, you know, explaining that we would like to invite them to bid um, and, and see if they would provide us with some names of mowing contractors that own electric equipment. 
maybe in two years some of these people have purchased. I know. I mean, I have an electric mower that is very early generation. <laughs> It, it didn't please me, but um, nowadays I understand that you can just go out there and mow all day long with this push mower, and mine would go 20 minutes, and then I'd switch to another battery, another 20 minutes, and I was done. So the technology is getting better, I, I will agree with that, and it's it's getting cheaper. And there's a $2,500 incentive from Green Mountain Power mm -hmm. for commercial grade equipment. The, uh, and $75... I think it's $75 per chore tool. Um, and if you uh, leaf blower, uh, weed whacker, um, chainsaw, if you buy all three, they'll kick in another $50 uh, production on the price. Mason. Yeah, this is good. And you know, the state, it's a hearing from a town of ours that we want these things to happen. And the state would like to probably hear you know, like, okay, well, you know, we have a situation we have for automobiles right now with the state. We have replace your ride. But there's no reason why the state isn't encouraging more to replace the mowers for commercial individuals. And also, how can the town interact with the bank, maybe credit union, to, you know, be there to make sure that if a uh, someone bidding is interested in loan money that you know this is a positive for the community and that the bank should look at it uh, as a good thing for the community but you know how those relationships can work because a lot of the, the mowers you know, they're, they're concerned about the investment cost so that investment cost is the thing that we focus on, even as a town suggesting it to the bank that, hey, we have these interests, how can you help potential contractors? Um, I think we'll see movement. Possible. I, I do think we need to put some language in there, Jeff, that would encourage people to bid that are using electric mowers, but I don't think we can eliminate the other part either. I mean, I, I think it puts us in a bad spot if we do, because we're so isolated anyway, and until they start using them more and seeing the value of that, I don't think we as a town can say, you know, you have to have an electric mower in order to mow, mow for us. I mean, I, I get it. I mean, I, I want to encourage it, but I don't want to discourage anybody from bidding either. We have to get the grass mold. And we have to That's priority we have one. to do that night and, and I your wording is is fine as another part of the bid process. Correct. That we could put in there and encourage electric mowers, but I don't think we can eliminate any of that other. I mean I'm not is record, highly recommends right and prefers Mm -hmm. Which is not right. saying you got to be electric. It's not. It, yeah, it's you not could nice. almost say it would be nice if there was an electric bidder to come in and and bid the projects. We would look favorably at that, but you know we can't we can't discriminate the other people either. So, yeah, go ahead, Nancy. So does this include the plowing contract also that you're working on? Well, we're, we're that hasn't really gone electric yet. Um, electric snow blowers in the winter. Some of them, if they have their electric mower. Would it accommodate a snow blower? No. Most of the no, electric no, mowers it, they have now are zero turns that we that I've seen. Yeah. And they're all so they don't you know they're not used for the sidewalk so. Uh, there aren't many tractors of the size that are in use here that right. right. have batteries that will meet the climate. And the snowblower right. would use that battery up if we had a foot of no, snow. The, I think that the mowing uh, equipment that is here is top, you know, that's certainly meets the needs right. of contractors right now. I'm not as convinced that the chore tools meet those needs. Um, and it's primarily an issue of weight. Uh, what it, UVM does is if they're sending somebody out and they're going to spend a half an hour weed eating around another project, they take the electric weed eater out. It 
somebody's going to be running a weed eater for eight hours a day, even though they could keep putting the batteries in, they can't hang on to that machine at all. That's right. Yeah, I, I get it. I weed whack too. <laughs> I know. That's a, not a fun job. <laughs> so also, there's another whole direction, especially with the park, that we have. Husqvarna has a beautiful one. It's a robotic mower. And uh, so you, you wind up with a, a robot operator. <laughs> you know? And these say that things also have some positives for the community in, 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 in really stepping forward in those directions. But it's something not to, to you know, it, it has its issues because it's a public space, but there's still some potential for, oh, have you, have you I, I would say one? you'd still have to have somebody sit and monitor well, it, otherwise someone's going to pick let's, it up and take it home. Let's let them get perfected <laughs> before we start doing that. <laughs> Can I just ask for a quick clarification? We're just talking about recommended language for a bid. Into the bid right. The Correct. The process. Right? So Correct. The language that I'm, just, I'm hearing that Jeff offered you is to say things like, we prefer this, we recommend it, right? To it. Right. And, but there's nothing in there that's and exclusionary we, of anything. And right. we just want to put this out and get bids. Yes. And then right. you'll decide when the bids And when we right. get the exactly. bid, we would like to know what type of equipment they have, right. which will yeah. assist us in our decision. And, and, oh. that's, and that's fine. And yeah, we would encourage electric mowers, but. This is just like you're putting yeah. bids out. <laughs> yeah. Jeff, as the energy coordinator, gave you some language to sort of yes. boost it up a little bit. Yeah. Absolutely. Right, exactly. And then we've got to put the bill back. Yeah. Right. And, and, and this whole idea of hey, how can the town with the uh, the institutions of banking locally recognize your desires and how can they can interact with uh, with uh, these contractors. I see that more of a role as the dealer that's selling the equipment to the person interested in buying that he would put the buyer together with financing to make his sale happen. Um, I, I don't know what type of relationship we really have with the credit union to encourage them to give loans to contractors. I, it's kind of their business. I don't, is that what you're trying to say? Yeah. We should encourage the credit more, union more, to give just, loans? Just, it could also relate to the other banks. You know, that okay. This town is wanting to see this type of activity and would love to see the, the banking institutions around these parts you know, step forward and help out these contractors to, to get these loans, you know, take a little more risk with their... Well, the prices of these mowers are, are compatible with what the other mowers are anyway. So, I, you know, it's it's kind of up to the contractor, whatever he wants to drive. And it's not I really up to it. us to encourage. Don't you feel we, we put it out there to encourage someone to do it, but we can't force somebody's hand. No, no. In the past, what we have done with uh, some things is we had a problem with the sidewalk a few years ago where we couldn't we were approached because we had the bid package was not used up yet and they needed equipment in order to uh, continue to do the job and he was under contract for another year and we wound up putting the bid back out for a three-year term, so it gave him four years, and he was the only one that's going to bid it anyway. So it allowed him to go out and purchase that for the bank. So we worked with people like that, They're and so it's, it's not something that we advertise mm -hmm. or go about. So if someone, like say, had the contract for a three-year period, and all of a sudden something seriously happened and their equipment failed or whatever, and they came to us, and we would probably do similar to what that was in that way. Mm -hmm. So that's the way so, we so would probably is, address it. So the contractors kind of know this? I mean, it's kind of like part of the program. Well, this, in this... Did you get in trouble, though? Well, in in when, this situation, no, because we, we put it out publicly. Uh -huh. So it was, you know, yeah. and he bid on it, and that was what how it all worked out what i'm trying to say is that you know we only have a small pool of contractors and it's are they ready in their mindsets to to, to make these risks 
to do it. How do we get there? You know, and and I, I see a lot of it where they feel like, oh, this is too costly. You know, so consequently they don't make the move. But but this is interesting to hear that you know, it could be. This is a three-year contract. Right. So within three years they can upscale. Right. You know, I mean, because you know they can make that offer to you in the in the bid. Like we're going to start right. with this, but we want to. And that's why it's a bid like process, and we review the the bids. And that's why that's the way it is. So. What's the timeline for the bid process? If you don't mind asking. Uh, we want to get it done by the fall. By the fall. No, yeah, this because is, this is we're from mowing next right. next year. Because so the contracts year. expire during the next budget season. Right. So we're trying to nail the contracts before the end so of the you budget put, process. You want to put this out by, I don't know, August 1st to have bids by August 30th. Right. Which, which yes. is not out of the ordinary to be a yep. season ahead. So, so the, can I ask, um, yep. with the verbiage that Jeff sent in, are you looking for me to update that bid with his verbiage and then bring it back to the next select board meeting for what, approval? What I would suggest is well, I'll sit down with you and we'll and Jeff and we can, the three of us can figure out how we can word this out. Uh, I was working on doing a putting it together yeah. and, and and we can help out with that oh you were working on the perfect okay okay i did uh wow. i looked to see if there are any other municipalities that are requiring electric and what i found i'm not convinced that there aren't some but what i found is that the municipalities that are doing this they own the own equipment right and they're employed who does mm -hmm. the work. Right. So, um, and then, you know, I try to think, is there an in-between where the town owns the equipment and the labor is what's bid on? That one seems no. a no, we problematic from a independent contractor standpoint. From yes. a budget standpoint, of, it's, it's very costly to own the equipment and try to maintain it because you have to hire an employee to... You, you're looking at anywhere from fifty to eighty to a hundred thousand dollars just in mowing and 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 an employee. So you're looking at quite a lot, and so we we're in the thrills of the the capital plan at this point. Uh, we keep looking at you know five to ten years down the road, and and so we've discussed that in capital planning that if we don't get any contractors to bid on these things then we're going to be faced with having to do something and that's where that would happen that we'd look more more seriously at something but we're trying to just get somebody to bid on the thing and go forward but i like the idea of encouraging someone to do it but we can't force that issue. It's the way I look at it. So that's one of the four items. I mean, the other one is uh, window dressers. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike uh, Tiso and Midge came in and uh, measured a one window in here and one window in there, and they actually met. Um, um, before we would do any working on it, we have to measure all of them. Um, it's pretty good uh, savings projected here um, for doing those uh, inserts. The difference is in the finish. Uh, the cheaper ones is natural are natural fine, and the more expensive ones are painted white, like the from here. Um, we are in the midst of doing uh, the, the measuring for this effort, and we construct, we have a, a community build, and at the town hall uh, for a week in October. Uh, well, the reason that the price on these inserts is as low as they are is because there's a lot of volunteer um, effort in it. Um, people sign up uh, for, people who are buying them are expected to participate in the community bill. And most do, not all, but most do. <laughs> they still get it even if uh, they don't. Um, and, and actually, there's a significant number of low-income people who are benefiting from this program. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, 
we're doing the measuring now and we're recruiting participants now. Um, and then again in October we'll be able to build the delivery of the, the product. So the cost of doing this building, would we know that in the advance? The cost of doing the building here is, is uh, referenced to this is being the meeting room, the office, and then there's some random awnings around the building. So that it's itemized so that you could say, I want to do this room, but not that room. So we have a figure of $972. I mean, we don't have that in our budget, so we'd have to look around and see where we could find that money. Well, from a comfort standpoint, for a time, um, the office, as opposed to the meeting room, um, would be a more likely target. And they would still be able to open their windows? They go on the, the inside. You guys have your windows open often. Oh, for the winter. I think it's something that you just like put in in the winter. And so, no, you wouldn't be able to open your window. Right. Okay. Right? Just saying. I did, couldn't hear you. She was asking if we would still be able to open our windows. But it's not something that you, you would You would have to pull the insert out. Mm -hmm. And it depends. I, I don't know for sure because I wasn't the measurer, but. Often with a crank type down at the top, awning the windows, crank, you yep. then they have to take that lever off. But the measures can identify that when they're, you know, when they're doing it. They okay. Get more quick look at it if that was an important issue. Okay. So, so Patty, uh, it could be that one, one or two windows could remain just the way they are. Yeah, I, I would leave it up to the people that live in that room to make whatever determination right. they want. About yeah, that. The office, but even in I this just thought space, it would bear mentioning. In this space, it might be good. Two windows opposite for air ventilation. Mm -hmm. Just do all the others. Yeah, I'm supposed to pull in a very good temperature difference the faster it happens. So it's, it's going out on all of the walls and the ceilings and the. Right. Some There's plenty of circulation in this building. Next to the, the window, um, so there would be a significant comfort benefit as, um, mm. as well as they the don't. They don't stay in year round. No, you, you pull them out in the, okay. in the, in the spring, spring, and you just have to store them back in like that. Oh. You could, you there could. Two little tabs down at the bottom of it. Like a screen. You you could keep two or three of them in all the time and just pull out a couple of them too. Where the windows that you have open. You Number three. Oh, there's the lighting, and I apologize for how long this has taken me, Frank. Um, I checked one of the fixtures in here and thought, well, I should check a couple more. And then I, so I found out that about half of these troughers are T12, most likely, almost assuredly, magnetic ballast. Mm -hmm. And the other half are T8 lamps. Um, and the fixtures there say quick start. That should mean that there's an electronic ballast in it. So there's one 48 inch uh, LED that could be used in each of those two scenarios. This goes two of them, one for each scenario. Um, I'm trying to get a price from being on electric supply with that price and with an interview with uh, Julia and Kristen about how the lights are used, and I could calculate some savings for making that change. I have, to, I have to know the usage, though, as well as, as the cost, and I'm, I haven't found somebody yet that has provided the appropriate specification for the lamps. But that should be coming up, finishing up here pretty quickly. Uh, the last thing I, I had is uh, a couple things, actually. Um, Mason brought to my attention, uh, or reminded me of the law that Vermont passed regarding idling. Um, and I, I think that uh, personally, and, and the Energy Committee was going to discuss it as well, but also bring it to the board's attention, um, having, a, having signage out explaining that law 
um, provided these brief enough and, and completely in appropriate locations, um, you know, that, that would be a you know, something that we wouldn't necessarily look to be enforcing legally, but up there as a statement of what it is, the law, and an encouragement for people to come to the key I think we mentioned last in our last meeting that um, no one was real thrilled about putting more signs up all around town. I, I already feel there's a lot of signs. Um, giving it a second thought as people enter town village limits, um, there are welcome to Rochester signs perhaps a sign on those posts reminding them of the idling law would would at least make them think about it. Um, enforcement, I'm, I'm not sure that our sheriff's department would go out of their way to make enforcement. They probably, if we ask them to enforce, if they, you know, happen to see it, um, that could be done. Um, I don't want to put them in a position of feeling as though they have to walk around town. Um, they may charge us more money, and <laughs> we don't have that in our budget. So um, all in all, um, it, it's something that we can strive for. Um, I personally feel if there are children or animals in a car, um, while it's 20 below zero or 90 degrees like today, um, I think it's more of a crime to shut that car off. There so are, there, are um, there, there, there should be exceptions. And I don't want residents running around yelling at other residents because they left their car running, not knowing that there's a baby or a dog inside that car. I don't want to start this, this war against people against people. Um, that, that's my thoughts. Um, Frank can give his opinion as well. Um, but but I, I can compromise with that and say that if we were to put a sign up on each end of the village, as a reminder, while you're in our village, there is an idling law. Um, I, w I would go that far with it. Many steps, some of them are small. Some of them are small. Yeah, small um, as these processes go on, most likely, even with the fossil fuel cars, they're going to have independent eating systems that are elected in the fossil fuel cars. Because that's what needs to happen if that is, a, is the concern. Well, that solves the whole idling problem. Yes, you're right. yeah, so the electric cars solve the idling problem. Well. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll put a plug in here for a thoughtful sign, which is to say I didn't know the law existed until I happened to pull in somewhere that had a sign that just said, reminder, Mm -hmm. Vermont, and it, it wasn't, you know, and so right. But we would have to have a sign at the post the office, the skip mart, at no, the no, bank, no. you know. I'm that, actually agreeing with you, which is to yeah. say, like, one sign yeah. is probably sufficient because I would wager most people might not know or might not even have remembered. Correct. Out of staters might not know right. we even and have that I law. Mean, yeah. So, mm -hmm. like, a well placed sign doesn't have to generate that feeling, but I also agree. Mm -hmm. like, Right, like, well like exceptions in early in the morning, the school bus sits there right. waiting for the children to arrive to go away, and they would have to be an exception. But I wouldn't want somebody to walk up to them and go, shut the bus off. <laughs> well, I just, that would happen if somebody was very adamant about the idling. So you, you have a situation a couple of weeks ago where the library realized it was time to actually have a cooling center. And that was like... Oh my gosh, that's you know responsibility. Well, at some point the library will, may have a no idling sign out front because it's all connected. We're, we don't want people idling with air. Well, the library on their provides car while we're free internet, a cooling center because the temperature issues are. I mean, mm -hmm. so so there is the connection, and it's education is the problem. Yeah, you know, it's like I had mentioned the last meeting. It's a little first. That little war you're talking about, it's already going on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I get kind of frustrated watching a couple people sitting eating ice cream with the windows rolled up, idling their car, you know, from Skipmark. You know, it's like, no, go take a walk. 
you know, and sit at the park. But, you know, I mean, so there are locations where the sign can be useful. Well, when we have a full board, we can discuss it at, at a, the next level. Okay. I mean, we did discuss it openly in the last meeting, so I guess we'll leave it at that for right now. But it's, 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 that's what discussions are. They're ongoing. I don't think I have anything under old business. You got grants? Any grants? I don't have any grant updates today. Thank you. And I don't think I have anyone on Zoom having public comments. No one on Zoom. You're up. Uh, I just, um, I know Mark is there. I'm here. Her boss has received a uh, particular information for me. I sent it to Julie. I don't know if she had a chance to see it. And uh, as a resident of the town, and, and the, t the paper is our official paper, and I, I really feel it's important to be as factual as possible. I, within less than two paragraphs, I found five inaccurate statements of, of, and plus I was the headline of the meeting. And so it's pretty crucial that the factual information is printed for the public to read because it didn't read very well for public members to read it. In. So it's just a concern of mine because why am I coming here if I have to be in a situation where it's frustrating to see that, you know, it's just, I'm, it's not anything personal, Martha? Martha that, just dropped out of the meeting. But we do have an official newspaper. So how do we relate to the information? That and is she is the reporter representing the newspaper. Problem with what's reported, what happens? I don't. I don't have a problem at all, Mason. I Whatever she wants to write, they're not official minutes, so I don't worry about it too much. And she does the best job she can, and I uh, support her 100%. She's been doing it a long time, and if she doesn't, nobody's perfect, nobody's right on, so you know what? It, it's the way it is. And God bless her for doing her job. Okay. And, and that's all I can say. If you didn't like what was written, then say something different and leave it at that. Well, I, that's why I'm here, having a comment. Um, you just made your comment and well received. Thank and, you. And we so appreciate noted. it. So noted. Let's go home. I actually I have a question. Go right I'm ahead. Here, I'm here for many reasons, but um, I haven't been able to come to select board meetings for the last several months, and so I went back over the minutes because I was trying to figure out what the status was of the high school vote. So I'm at, this is purely a process <laughs> question, like not a content question, which is to say, um, it doesn't look like there's a vote scheduled. Based on what I read from the minutes, we're having four informational sessions and then scheduling a vote. Did I do that correctly? We've already had two right. of the four informational that we promised that yep. we would give to the town people to contribute, right. ask, elaborate. Um, Mason was one that discussed the fact of moving the vote to the November election rather than having a separate election in September. Um, Makes the most sense. One of, one of the reasons why it was in September was because a lot of the residents in the town do go away for the winter, and so we will just need to solicit their absentee ballots if we go with November. So you have decided on November? We have basically decided on November, but that is still not it's decided not, it's by not the really select official, board but, yet. We still have two more We think that's meetings. the positive way to go. Yeah, that's why I'm saying Can went from is, September to November. Is, so mine is, that's why mine is purely in process. Like if, yeah. if I'm looking ahead, I should expect <clears> that there's going to be two more informational meetings and then some, to look for something that says the vote will be X. I like think this I, is the way it's been for three years now. Well, I know. That's why I was asking. That's what I'm saying. Like, this is, this is purely process mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I went back over the minutes. And so, like, I had seen the two informational sessions. Mm -hmm. I had seen Mason's suggestion about November 5th. I had seen a couple different things. And I just wanted to know what to look for. And it sounds like 
just look for the two more informational meetings and keep an eyeball out for the actual right. date. And, at, then, at and the, then more information will be out there. At the moment, we're kind of stepping aside so the school board can get their budget oh, in order. Right, okay. And our tax bills can go right. out. And so we're just kind of stepping a little aside on that, not making it the front issue. Um, I have a meeting on Thursday with the school board and the superintendent. It'll, again, be part of our discussion. And so I, I think that's the direction we're going in right now. Unofficially, but that's the information. No, no, no. That was that was literally the information I was looking for. <laughs> I have an announcement. The town of Hancock at the town hall will be hosting a free veterinary clinic Tuesday, July twenty third. That's the day after our next meeting. Um, do you have a cat or a dog that needs to see the vet? And this was also posted by Kristen. Do they need an exam, a vaccination, blood work, or have their nails trimmed? Might they need to have their have their teeth or a growth looked at. Um, if you want to schedule an appointment for that, you can contact Michelle at 802-479-7524. If you have uh, income, if you're over the age of 60 or have a uh, $2,322 a month dollars for a household income of one or thirty-one fifty-one for a household of two, you um, may be eligible for reduced rates. No, for, it's all free. Free rates. It's all, that whole program except for the spay and neuter. Um, this is by appointment only, so you do need to call 802-479-7524 for more information. By Friday. By Friday. Yeah. That's what's on Um. And I see no other business. I move we adjourn the meeting. Second. Second. All in favor? All right. All right. Good night, all.